Okay, so uh, thank you for coming, before anything. Uh, before we get started, a uh, couple things. Please, uh, I'm gonna ask you to give a warm round of applause to all the volunteers, like Angelo, people helping the staff, and the Black Hat organization. Now, how many of you have ever used Windows? <laughs> no, I don't believe you, you didn't get the question. How many of you ever used Windows? Okay, that's everybody. How many of you have ever done a penetration test? Okay, that's like half of you. How many of you have done a penetration test on the Windows network? All of the previous ones. Okay, you should have seen what we're gonna show you because it's so trivial and also so interesting. So who are we? Uh, so my name is Jonathan Brassard. Um, I've been presenting here uh, um, a few times. If you like low-level hacking, reverse engineering, and things like this, we run a couple conferences in uh, Paris and Hawaii, so feel free to submit. Um, so yeah, I'm part of the program, program committee of ShakaCon. And uh, moabi.com, it's a new reverse engineering platform I'm setting up. If you want to uh, trade up for free, uh, just sign up. It's invite only, but if you come from Black Hat, we'll approve it. Right, so uh, I'm Hormazd. I'm a security engineer at Salesforce as well. Um, this is my first talk at Black Hat, so fingers crossed it goes okay. Um, I'd like to point out that we are breaking Windows 10, kind of, sort of, but yeah, it is uh, breaking Windows 10, breaking Microsoft Edge, uh, released five days ago, so good luck with that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Right, so, agenda. Uh, what we're gonna go through today, uh, basically we're gonna do like an introduction to what SMB is, uh, what kind of previous work is done for relaying SMB hashes, uh, S, uh, SMB Relay uh, rebooted, which is basically us, uh, our attack. Uh, yeah, we have a couple of interesting attack names, uh, go to see Jonathan. Uh, French Kiss attack, the syphilis attack, which includes malware, obviously, uh, menage a trois, and how do we mitigate against it? Uh, you wanna give the IBM? Okay, so uh, let's imagine for a second we're back in like 1984, and we all work for IBM. So we're working on this uh, awesome operating system called OS2 with a small startup called, called Microsoft. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. Um, so basically, we, we train to on this operating system, which is uh, not even in protected mode yet. So it's read mode 16, 16 bit, meaning that we have one megabyte of memory at max. We don't have multitasking. And what we're trying to do is file sharing. So doing file sharing without multitasking is a challenge in itself, because like doing TCP connections and things is super difficult. But essentially that's where we are. And the big question mark is, how about security? In 1984, uh, because that's where SMB and SIF, um, the file system, were actually um, invented. Uh, if you consider that in 95, uh, when Microsoft first shipped Windows 95, the shares were actually open, um, because the rational behind it was that if you buy a computer is to put it in a, a corporate network and you want to be able to share files with all of your colleagues without entering passwords. So now if we go back to 1984, like obviously there will be even less security, right? And that's where all the problems we're gonna to discuss today are rooted. Right, um, so a quick demo of what ex exactly has been done previously. Um, Forgive the video because it requires a LAN to do this. Right, so what we have here is basically um, a cool piece of software from Core Security which does SMB relaying. I'll explain more about that later on. Um, we have a unsuspecting victim who's gonna browse to some internet website which is basically in the LAN. And this website has got an image tag in it which basically is gonna do like some magic in the background or something like that. We'll explain that more later on. But what is happening over here is this browser sent NTLM creds off the victim automatically to a unknown source, which is mind boggling in itself. I mean, why would you do that? But fine, it's over the intranet, so you'd assume, okay, fine, whoever's in your LAN is kind of sort of safe. 
as you can see over here, uh, it's uh, basically the admin creds have been sent, and over here you have, like, we are uploading some kind of malware payload, so fantastic. So we upload malware, we run it, we get a reverse shell, Bob's your uncle, and whatever. Right, so that is what has been done previously. So a quick walkthrough, what exactly is SMB? Uh, it's basically file sharing on your Windows network. Uh, it's a server message block protocol, whatever you can call it. Uh, Linux calls it Samba. Um, it requires authentication. Back in the day, there used to be basic authentication, which was basically sending your creds in plain text. Then uh, it improved uh, by doing LAN manager, which was basically MD4 of your uh, credentials, which could be broken easily. Uh, then it improved again with doing NTLM v1, which was basically MD4 and HMAC MD5, and they would basically break the password into two parts, which you could break that really easily. The thing is, they came up with NTLM v2, and NTLM v2 is what we're going to be attacking as well today, and it was designed for local networks. Um, NTLM v2, like I mentioned, it's a server client challenge response kind of protocol, basically. Uh, HMAC MD5 with a uh, MD4 hash of your password is used to sign all the messages. The good thing about this is it cannot be replayed, apparently. Um, SMB Relay, which I actually showed you in the demo today, basically it's a really, really old exploit. It was found really, I mean, like, what, uh, 14 years ago in 2001 by uh, Certistic of CDC. Um, the tool that I showed you right now is basically from Core Security. It's SMB Relay X. You can download it from online. There's a Metasploit module, so skiddies can use this. Fantastic. Um, what it does is basically it replays a hash from one machine to another machine, and that's about it. Uh, it authenticates using that. Um, the original attack scenario is very limited. It's basically only on the intranet. Uh, those of you who have done penetration testing for Windows networks will definitely have done this before. Uh, basically set up a rogue website and it'll start relaying hashes all Just across. <laughs> uh, limits of this attack, we'd like to stress this a lot. Not possible over the internet. This is the mitigating factor, apparently, for this exploit. I mean, the rationale behind it was that uh, the initial protocol was never meant to be exposed to anything like the internet. It was built from the very start to create, like, corporate networks. Uh, and the first exploits being um, um, affecting only local network, people assume that, you know, the attacks we're going to show you today are just very not possible. Right. So there was a partial fix. Basically, you cannot replay the credentials to the same machine again. Uh, that's it. Uh, you could break the hash. You could relay to another machine. You could do whatever you want with it. Um, so... Uh, interesting thing, this slide came up because I was telling Jonathan, like, when we were doing this research, like, uh, we're basically repeating what everyone else is doing, only remotely over the internet. And Jonathan's just, like, looking at me, like, did you realize what you just said? You're doing it over the internet, man. What the <laughs> hell? Anyways. So, SMB Relay rebooted. Um, yeah, demo time. Okay, so we're going to start with demos all the time, and then we will explain you, like, what's going on underneath. Okay, so this is the attacker machine. We're setting up a relay. We're gonna set Wireshark just to uh, see what's going on in the background. So packet sniffer. And we're gonna load a page using IE. And we can see that there is actually some traffic going on. And this is happening over the internet. So that's just not supposed to happen at all. Uh, you can also see over here that we have a received challenge and a received authentication that we relayed over just to prove that we're actually doing the replaying. Anyways, back to the slides. Right, so all Windows versions are affected uh, back from, I guess, 95 maybe, all the way to Windows 10, uh, Edge, this is all default out of the box. What I'm trying to say out here is that your machine is sending NTLM creds over the internet without doing any user interaction ever. So basically, you visit a website, that's it, done. You have owned. It's fantastic, right? Um, this is another fantastic slide. Uh, basically, Microsoft has a great uh, mitigation blog on SMB relaying. Uh, this was published way back in like 2009 or something. 
but they're saying over here that the issue is not severe mainly because it's limited only to the local intranet. And I don't think so they ever verified that, but sure. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, if we look at IE, there is actually a setting um, to get to choose like where you're supposed to authenticate using SMB. Um, so you can do anonymous logon. The default is to log on on the intranet zone. So what I just described, you suppose, basically it's leveraging single sign-on. So when you are using Active Directory and you're connecting to the shares of somebody else inside your company, you don't have to enter your credentials again. Um, so this is the default. And there is also automatic logon with current username and password and prompt for username and password. Uh, what is interesting is that none of this actually works. Uh, <clears throat> if we look at the uh, trigger, so the trigger is really trivial. It's basically like you redirect um, um, through an image tag or something like that, uh, if you are attacking via HTML, you redirect via this image tag to a remote share on the internet, and that's it. That is the trigger. Uh, so we saw, we saw that uh, SMB traffic is actually going on, which is not supposed to happen, right? Because the defaults were um, are connecting only over the intranet and not like sending your credentials all over to the internet to anybody asking it. Okay, and if we look at the packets, like we can see the username in plain text, uh, we can see uh, yeah, the DNS, a whole bunch of stuff, and there is actually um, 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 a derivative of your password, which is not like what we call the hash, as in a pass the hash attack, but which is like, yeah, derive NTLM hash from your original password. So a hacker can get that from the internet. Uh, let's look a little bit at like, why is this happening? Uh, so we've been looking at, okay, this is just uh, the, um, the setting box of uh, Windows. Uh, if we look like, you know, inside a debugger, like which thread is actually running, like we find that one. And then looking a bit, like poking around, we actually find the vulnerable uh, DLL. So you can see on the right hand side that this is the, uh, the menu corresponding to the previous one. What is interesting up there is that this DLL is actually not an Internet Explorer DLL. It's a DLL which is in the system directory, and it's actually shared by many more applications and not just IE. And we're gonna see what the impact of that. Uh, so then uh, we, so we took this window setting, we took a snapshot of the registry, we changed the setting to another one, uh, for instance, like, uh, you know, prompt for uh, username and passwords every time. We took another snapshot of the registry, and this is a diff. So basically, the setting is actually stored in the registry, and this is working. But if we look at a trace um, of, uh, you know, running IE and connecting uh, to a remote share using Wexploit, uh, we can see in the next slide. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, we can see that it's actually querying all those uh, registry keys. So when you connect from the internet uh, to a remote share, all those, all those keys are, are probed and none of them works or actually does anything. So we learned a few things uh, out of this. Uh, we learned like which registry key is actually uh, involved. Uh, we learned that uh, the, the applications which fetch URLs, I mean, unless you're writing your own TCP IP stack, basically you're leveraging the one of Windows. And if you do leverage uh, the URL mechanism of Windows, you are vulnerable, whichever application you use, because this is coming from the system Windows directory. Um, okay, let's go for another uh, demo. So this time we're gonna leverage this trigger and actually push a malware from the internet. So it's assuming a couple things. Uh, it's assuming that you, I mean, the corporation you're attacking, the machine is domain joined, and that there is an SMB server exposed to the internet to relay to, belonging to that company. That's a pretty big assumption for the time being.
So, so you can see the thing like we put the attacker in green. We're asking the web browser to browse to an uh, attacker control web page. And that's essentially it. And if we go back to the um, command and control, we got a, sh a new shell in our interpreter. So we're going to pivot to like another uh, process ID in memory. And then we're just going to push malware into this same machine. Okay, so it's migrated successfully inside another process running in the memory of the target victim. And now we can actually, we, so we have a shell on the machine. Like we can, you know, list directories, browse directories, whatever. From the internet. Uh, right, so why exactly did we call this a Phyllis attack, first of all? Uh, this was made up about one hour ago when we decided, like, okay, we are sending malware over the internet. Um, basically, we set up just a, any website. Uh, people know how difficult it is to set up a website nowadays, apparently. Uh, you can set it up on r slash netsec, fool users into saying, check out these brand new exploits. Um, they visit with IE. I guess if you're on NetSec, you don't use IE. But uh, you can visit it with IE. We get your creds. We attack your domain controller. We upload malware. All of this with ready-made tools. And apparently, this is not supposed to happen still. I like to keep emphasizing that point. Um, but just uh, malware upload is not enough, apparently. Um, what about NTLM using HTTP server authentication? First, I'd like to say some attack limitations to this first. Uh, SMB signing has to be disabled. Uh, this was one of the mitigations pro proposed by Microsoft, which doesn't allow you to upload any files to anything using SMB without SMB signing. Um, it is disabled by default, uh, unless you're on the domain controller. People recommend to disable it because it's a huge performance impact. It's like a 20% performance, 30% performance impact. Um, and you need SMB outbound on all of your machines from the firewall. Uh, this is an interesting slide. Uh, SMB signing must be disabled for certain corporate firewalls to be to work properly. Like yes, he. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So fantastic. The one mitigation that's there is uh, disabled by default or whatever. Sure. Not a big problem. Okay. Uh, another one that is uh, basically. So people always say like, why? Uh, okay, so it's not a big deal. You have to have SMB ports open. It doesn't matter. I have uh, complete firewall security. I don't all ingress firewall uh, security is all set up properly. But not many people know that you can do RDP or HTTP. Apparently, uh, it's a new feature in Windows Server. So here's a little quick demo of how it actually works. Mm. So we'll give you the demo, and then we'll explain what's actually going on. So yeah, here we. This is just showing RDP or HTTP working in the normal happy scenario where you don't have where you have the creds and everything. So this is a Windows RDP gateway. Uh, basically, you can set up apps, you can set up RDP connections. You can see there's a PowerShell calculator. We're just going to launch calculator for now. So you download a connection script, and if you do about double click on it, you get connected. And in this case, we choose to like just execute a calculator. Yep. Um, so just one interesting thing out here: the authentication that you saw over here on this web page, NTLM auto HTTP. So great. So this solved the problem of going back to the network once you sniffed a hash, or when you want to relay, because instead, you know. Uh, let's say I have your hash, I'm on the internet. If I want to connect to you know, a machine inside your LAN, I still have to pierce your firewall. So instead of piercing your firewall over SMB, which is you know, quite likely not going to happen because people don't allow incoming traffic using SMB when they're reasonable. However, this solves the problem because we can just relay it to RDP over HTTP. And like, if your servers are this enabled, like, that's how it works. There is nothing to pierce.
So uh, for this to work, we need to first uh, sniff a hash, then we need to crack the hash to get like your proper, um, um, yeah, your proper credentials essentially. The username is always sent in plain text, uh, but the, crash, the, the hash needs to be cracked. For that, we need to, uh, we leverage GPUs. We have um, one machine with like five GPUs. Uh, it's using a very standard tool for hash cracking called Hashcat. And we're cracking at two to four billion a second. Um, so that's what the rack looks like. Um, yep, and so this key space we used for uh, demoing was like a key space of 68 characters, so a mix of uppercase, lowercase, alphanumeric, and those special characters. Uh, assuming you have a password length of eight or less, we can break that in less than three days. And of course, like if you have a million hashes, breaking th this million hash, this million of hashes is not going to take longer. Like Hashcat can, uh, you know, do all of it in a parallel way. So if we look at, you know, I was like. But you, who's actually using this uh, uh, authentication of SMB over HTTP? Uh, like probably nobody. So I gave it a, a short and search, and no, actually a fair bit of people. The first one being Sony in Asia. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. <laughs> <coughs> right. So the impact of this. So what exactly did we do over here right now? Um, we can retrieve your user credentials, great. Uh, we need a hash tracking machine to do that, uh, that's no problem. Uh, we have remote code execution, uh, if you have SMB signing disabled, but eh, that's always done because of performance or firewall reasons. Default anyway. Yeah. Um, the main users of IE are corporate environments, uh, banks, uh, your bank always uses IE, uh, so great for us, I guess, all your money is gone. Um, however, this is not the only trigger that we found. Um, there are other triggers against, uh, that create SMB connections. Like we already mentioned that it is one DLL. It's not just used by IE, it's used by literally everything in Windows for doing NTLM auth. So initcplc.dll, if you link again that, you are vulnerable. Right, so, video trigger. So let's try to, uh, instead of just using IE as a trigger, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to you know, use different clients. So for instance, we can leverage um, a media player, Windows media player, to redirect to uh, HTTP. This is just because it's funny. Uh, I actually took a malware who was doing it, and I just happened to change the URL. Uh, this is a supported feature of Windows um, uh, media videos. Um, yeah, you can embed an URL which gets open automatically when you play the video. And if you do that, like, yeah, you can redirect this particular page to SMB, and you're set. Um, so the rest of the demo is essentially the same thing. We got a meta-preter shell. Maybe, yeah, here we go. We're migrating to a new PID, process ID in memory. And this is it. We enjoying all shell. So what the user did was basically open a video and pair it. Any questions? Cool. Right. So let's go to the real thing. Uh, so this attack is called a menage à trois. And instead of breaking the hash, like with the RDP um, uh, demo, uh, we're actually gonna relay over the internet to a server which is listening with the same kind of connectors, uh, accepting SMB authentication over HTTP. Uh, so instead of using RDP, we're actually gonna attack an exchange server. I mean, many, many people, you know, have, have uh, exchange servers when they're using uh, uh, Microsoft clients. Um, so like, yeah, it seems like a reasonable setup. So Omraz is gonna start in the background a small service which uh, will listen for incoming SMB. 
and the trigger is actually just Outlook. So you view an email, and just the fact of viewing this email, you didn't click on any picture or anything. It's actually sending your credentials um, over the internet to SMB server listening. And this SMB server is relaying it to Exchange to the point that we're downloading your entire mailbox. This is not one email, this was your entire mailbox that you can see over there. Maybe. Yep, here we go. So we download like the entire mailbox in XML. And from a user perspective, like this, extremely little interaction. You basically receive an email and open the email, and that's it. It gets viewed by default like when you open uh, Outlook anyway. So interaction can be like absolutely zero. Cut. I think we call them right. <laughs> Fine. Uh, just like the point out over here, you can see the name of the sender, you can see the email IDs, you can see um, basically the subject of anything. So this is your entire mailbox over here. Um, that's it, so you, we spam you emails and we get your entire mailbox. How many people use Exchange servers over here? <laughs> <laughs> so this is very close to be warmable, right? Because uh, once, once you download like the uh, XML file um, from a user, a corporate user, you have access to most of their passwords, but you also have access to all of their contacts and things like this. Uh, we could do that to you know, send more emails, basically. Okay, so uh, if we look back at like those demos, uh, we've been doing it over Azure and AWS. So if you have either clients or servers on any of those, you are basically vulnerable. They don't do uh, SMB egress filtering. Um, so like we saw with the Shodan query, there's actually thousands of servers uh, allowing SMB connection over HTTP, and the defaults aren't safe like extending protection is not enabled by default, which is the only thing which would actually prevent this class of attack. Uh, even if you have packet signing enabled, since we're relaying over HTTP, um, it, 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 it's not gonna protect you. However, extended protection would, but it's extremely hard to configure and it's enabled nowhere by default. It wouldn't prevent you from, in any case, sniffing packets. It's all about relaying. So how to protect yourself? Uh, so like we said, the first mitigation is at some point, you need to exit, you need to have an SMB packet which is exiting to the internet. Uh, so the first layer of mitigation is absolutely to drop SMB at firewall level, um, um, you know, in corporate environment. This is actually the preferred remediation offered by Microsoft. And also, it sucks. Why? Because if you domain joined on a laptop and you bring your laptop home, well, then you do remain vulnerable. So instead of you know, um, uh, doing network like in the 90s, like, you know, like an egg, hard outside and soft inside, I much prefer a solution which is host-based hardening. So instead of relaying on your corporate uh, firewall, I would strongly recommend you actually use your Windows personal firewall to do the same thing, which is essentially dropping SMB traffic to public IPs. You can, like, if you want to keep the functionality within your network, that's probably fine but I don't see any legitimate reason to send SMB packets over the internet. Or you're doing something insane, like exposing SMB uh, servers anyway. Um, so you might want to enable packet signing, uh, which um, you know, prevents, it, doesn't, it, it won't prevent the packets from leaking and your hashes to be leaked to the internet, but if a hacker gets your hashes, it will prevent them from basically coming back to your network uh, and push malware like we first did. Um, uh, if you're using, um, yeah, if he's relaying to a, a, an SMB server, this will have, I mean, packet signing is not gonna prevent uh, um, the uh, leak of your credentials. Basically, it does kill the connection, but once the credentials have been sent. So in terms of, you know, preventing uh, hash leakage, it doesn't work. And of course, uh, enable extended protection if you can. Right, so what's the takeaway over here? Um, 
We managed to get your credentials over the internet. That's one. Uh, it's super simple to do. Uh, you have ready-made tools to do it for you. Uh, literally, we didn't do like crazy amount of coding for this. It was all it's a lot of ready-made stuff out there. Um, it is not supposed to work according to Microsoft. Uh, we reported it about nine months ago. They don't want to fix it uh, because it's defense in depth. You need, uh, you, like we said, you need to uh, have egress filters on your firewall. Um, we managed to steal your credentials through a variety of ways, uh, through a website, uh, through an email. Um, spam users download their mailbox through a video. Uh, my mom and dad would definitely open up a video easily. I could easily convince them to do that, uh, steal their credentials that way. Um, you could upload malware. Uh, you, up, you relayed from SMB to Exchange. Um, this is just a small tip of the iceberg kind of thing that uses NTLM SSP. I mean, literally every Windows service uses NTLM in the background to freaking authenticate everything. Um, people use uh, Kerberos nowadays, but Kerberos is limited because you have to be in the domain to do that. So NTLM is still being used widely. Um, we showed that we did it on Windows 10. Uh, great news for that. Windows 10, Windows Edge, completely patched. Nothing is going to block it. Um, and it was all done remotely. Fantastic. In terms of triggers, uh, so we... Thank you. Thank you. So inter interestingly enough, we stumbled upon this when we were actually working with uh, Sergey and Shohan, who are presenting tomorrow on another class of attack, uh, which is like a derivation of XXE. Um, we saw like this year many attacks on XXE, and an interesting one from, uh, I mean, an interesting post from Silence was absolutely related to what we're doing. First off, they were working on XXE, and they realized that uh, when you can man in the middle updates locally, many uh, many software actually can be uh, can be forced to do an SMB connection instead of just um, um, I mean from from an XXE so from an XML file essentially um, vulnerable software include like a, a huge variety of software which are linked against the library we discovered um, they include like things like iTunes uh, major antivirus uh, major clients for you know typical uh, um, 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 I mean web protocols uh, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> The three we've shown like be belong to Microsoft, but a lot of third-party software are going to be affected by this. Basically, if you can put a new URL anywhere, and this URL resolves to SMB, you are vulnerable. Period. Uh, on that note, we'd like to say thank you to MSRC for working us with this. <laughs> oh, uh, I'd also like to point out: uh, 14 years since this vulnerability has been found, and nobody is done packet sniffing on NTLM auth over HTTP. I'm pretty sure somebody's using it out there. Just FYI. Yeah. Uh, any questions? So I started by asking, like, who's done, like, you know, network assessments against Windows networks? Or did you miss this? This is so obvious. <laughs> any questions? We got a mic. Uh, yeah? For, um, I noticed in your exploit that you well, we're remotely getting the username and password, or sorry, the username and uh, domain name uh, yeah. over HTTP in the sniffs that you showed. Yep. They're coming through in the clear. So that's a pretty big breach in itself, right? Because we're leaking the user's credentials, not oh. their password, but I mean, you've got something to crypt. Passwords against. are in plain text, and you get hashes of the credentials, essentially, that you need to, ha to, to break or relay. So, so that's a pretty big like, uh, way to identify that user perpetually, right? And sure. uh, it leaks something about the internal structure, the name of the company they're from. If they're coming off of like an anonymizer or something. Um, if I'm using Chrome, is that an effective mitigation? Um, Chrome does actually uh, mitigate it because it asks you before sending any credentials. <laughs> we so, haven't checked third-party player. I mean, we haven't checked like you know plugins, media players, and stuff like that within Chrome, which could very well be leveraging the very same API as a web browser by itself. Uh, yes, you're right. Chrome is not vulnerable in the way IE is. Uh, coming to your, um, you know, the question in regards to essentially information disclosure, uh, in regards to, um, um, you know, what's happening inside the network when you try to climb inside a, a, um, a user. 
I don't think we care so much about information disclosure when we got shells. Like, you know, if the attack works, you get a shell inside the network. So like mapping the network, like you don't, there is nothing to guess, basically. You are inside the network. Any other question? Yeah, so in that case that you just said, oh, you don't care because, oh, you're getting a shell. But, you know, in my enterprise, maybe I don't have uh, anything exposed over SMB or RDP right. or anything. I mean, you're still leaking my name, which I, I, I don't want to change, really. It's a pain. That's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. Yep. Uh, just to be clear, if you're using a firewall on your computer or on your router, you're not vulnerable, right, to this attack? If, uh, by default, you are vulnerable, even if you're using a firewall. Absolutely. You need to block the certain ports to yeah. mitigate it, yeah. <laughs> but that's not the default, right? Like, you install your Windows machine, like, you're not, you're not safe, basically. You need to configure your own firewall uh, to block SMB traffic to public IPs. Otherwise, you're going to break, like, file sharing within your LAN, which might be, you know, what you want. Uh, but, but by default, just because you have, like, you know, uh, XPSP2 or better, and that a firewall is embedded, since it's not configured to block it, like, yeah, you are vulnerable. I wanted to ask if you guys had explored, uh, you mentioned one of the major mitigating factors was outbound SMB. Have you explored WebDAV or the uh, new features within Windows to have port specifications on the outbound connections? So we tried within a large corporation I won't mention uh, to come back inside your own network mm -hmm. um, uh, by creating um, basically holes and I tried mostly with FTP, uh, passive FTP. Uh, but we didn't try web dev and all that. Uh, I would say, you know, every technique we know to pierce firewalls, apply. If this is really the way you want to go back inside the network, yeah, you, you could do that. Hi. Any other question? Uh, to, to make this uh, attack work, uh, the u users have to log on as administrator or just any account in administrator's group because of the UAC? As far as I know, any account. Any account? Yeah. Okay. And any account can, can relate to our Oh, thing. you mean when you re, uh, what are you talking about? Like leaking hashes to the internet or where can we execute and relay stuff? Execute, execute any, any uh, program. So to leak stuff on the internet, yeah, any account is vulnerable. Like you log in with your machine, um, uh, if we, if, if basically you can browse the web, uh, you are vulnerable, period. When it comes to relaying back, so it kind of depends. The exchange stuff we've seen, if you have a mailbox on exchange, you own, period. Um, no, there is, I see where you're going. Uh, you're asking me, are every user about, uh, able to, uh, to RDP? And no, it's not the case. Okay, so, thank you. Right, agreed. Uh, one more, can you put that mitigation slide back up? Real quick, and then what? What was that DLL again that you were speaking of? I don't think it's on that slide, but okay, it's in a white paper anyway, uh, which you 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 should have access to. But the, uh, the DLL is called inetc plc .dll, and it's under uh, C Windows directory. There we go. Okay, any other questions? Yep. In your initial repro there, where you were using IE with an image tag, were you then redirecting HTTP to an SMB URL, or how are you getting it to do an SMB connection? Uh, the image tag automatically sends an SMB connection. That's it, we don't do any redirect, nothing. Oh, okay. So you put an image tag, it does an SMB. Uh, yes. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one. I have one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. So, is it your understanding from communications with Microsoft that if that DLL was implemented correctly, it would be paying attention to the registry flags and not doing SMB auth, or is that something that Microsoft says is intended functionality? I don't work for Microsoft. I don't know. You you might need to 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 add them. Like, but oh, they want to patch this, and what wh what is the deal? Ha have they acknowledged that that is a flaw in that DLL? 
they have acknowledged there is a problem, they are investigating, and they are for nine months. One more question? Yeah? Um, so you're talking about the very first demo where we're actually pushing malware? Yeah, you need to be able to uh, uh, connect back to SMB. That's the problem we, we, we discussed, right? So either it's exposed uh, straight away on the internet uh, and it has a public IP and no firewall and, and you're basically connecting. Uh, otherwise, like, yeah, the, uh, uh, you cannot push malware that way. Uh, and if you have packet signing, you cannot push mal uh, malware anyway. Um, uh, but that's why we have this enhancement, which is basically relaying over um, SMB over HTTP, and then there is zero mitigation. Um, also, I'd like to point out that SMB allows you to upload files and execute them as services, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Yeah. Uh, have you checked anything on Windows phones or tablets? We, I actually have you. Yeah, it doesn't work on that. <laughs> okay, it doesn't work. Uh, SMB is not a protocol supported by Windows phones, apparently. As far as I know, just saying. Excellent question. One more question? We set for today? Ah, one more, yeah? I don't assume so. Not uh, really. Um, wait. I haven't tested, but I... I mean, in terms of doing the HTTP connection, for sure, no. Like, the, the connection happens via the proxy. Uh, then what happens when the proxy is trying to uh, resolve the uh, SMB share? That is, that is the, the, the real question. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't assume that uh, HTTP proxy settings apply to other protocols. But it's worth checking. Um, I'd like to answer, like add more to that. Basically, your proxy is going to replay. Most proxies do that. They kind of have either set credentials or they have they replay the same credentials over because NTLM works on the. Uh, basically, it authorizes your TCP stream. It doesn't authorize like that one particular request only. So it ha it cannot it it. So NTLM ends at the proxy and then proxy creates another NTLM authentication to whatever it's trying to get. No more questions. One more. Uh, if you run uh, SMB signing, does it work? No. Sorry, bro. So we discussed SMB signing uh, tremendously, right? It, no, it... I just uh, I missed it a bit earlier. So. Well, Did you get the question? I can't hear you. Uh, then it was nothing. It's OK. I ask if it works with SMB signing, because I didn't see it before. Uh, it was a bit late. Um, yeah, it does, the malware upload doesn't work with SMB signing, but you can still download Exchange mailboxes. Any more question? Okay, I guess we're good for today. Thank you very much Thank for you. your attention.